Commissioner Bob, Stolich. I like it for the shirt. <laughs> All right. Um, we uh, will call the Ways and Means Committee to order. Um, uh, Kathy, roll call, please. Or who's doing the roll call? Are you doing it? Correct, Kathy. Yeah. Commissioner Foster. Here. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Here. Chairman Hughes. Here. Commissioner Larry. Here. Commissioner Mahoney. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Snyder. Commissioner Wilkins. Here. Commissioner Skolnick. Here. Okay. All present. Well, thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, the first item is the approval of the minutes of August 20th, 2020. So, so moved. So far. They have a motion. It's been supported. Are there any comments or corrections uh, on the minutes uh, that were provided in your packet? If not, uh, we'll vote. Roll call, Kathy, please, on the minutes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. You're muted, Commissioner Snyder, but I'll accept that as a yes. And yes. Commissioner Stolnick. Yes. Nine yes. Okay, great. Um, we now have time for public comment on an agenda item. If anyone, uh, there are 34 people on this call. If anyone would like to make a comment on an item that's on today's agenda, um, now's your chance. You can raise your hand electronically or you can speak up. Yes. I'm sorry, did somebody want to speak? I don't okay. see any hands, Bob. I, I, don't, I don't see any. I don't either. either. All right, oh, it's at the top. Yes. We'll move ahead then uh, to items for consideration. The first item being WM 20 slash 09 dash 72 to approve the payment of the accounts payable of 8 million. So moved. Support. Okay. Um, are there any? Any uh, any comments on the accounts payable? Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Yes, Mr. Larry. Uh, again, so I oppose this motion because we can't scrutinize these payments individually. Um, I know I won't get a second for it, so I won't make the motion, but I think every payment over $100,000 needs to be a separate motion item. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Laren. Um, roll call vote, please. Mr. Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Eight yes, one no. Okay, the next item is WM20 slash 09-73. Um, authorize a contract with United Healthcare to provide the Medicare Advantage plan to Muskegon County post-65 retirees from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021 for a 20 21 monthly premium rate of $194.81 for a Medicare eligible individual. So moved. So moved. Support. 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 Okay. Um, are there any questions on that? Kristen is on the call if you have if there's anything you'd like to know. May I, Mr. Chair? Yes. Seeing as how I don't quite qualify for this yet, is this a good thing? I don't really know. Kristen, would you like to comment on that? 
sure. Kristen Wade, Human Resources Director. Yes, this is a good thing. Um, it's been a very good plan for the retirees, and it's a cost savings of uh, just under 20%. So it's a very good thing. Perfect. Love saving money. So uh, <laughs> may I have an, a question? Yes, Zach, go ahead. Is the cost savings over what? Over the previous contract. Okay, because it doesn't appear that they're actually the low bidder. Correct, they are not the low bidder. They are 19.2% uh, reduction or savings over their previous contract. Um, Humana was the low bidder and they would offer us a 26% cost reduction based on our analysis and what United Healthcare has been offering our retirees, our recommendation is to offer some stability to the retirees in this uncertain time and uh, remain with United Healthcare, which still offers a savings. A savings over last year, you mean? Correct. Okay, any other any other questions on that? If not, um, Kathy, roll call, please. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Lehring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Mr. Snyder, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Eight yes, one no. All right. The next item is WM20-09-74 to approve the resolution to approve cost and special assessment role for Browns Pond Lake level. So, so moved. So moved. Support. support. I, the motion, there's been a motion that's been supported. Um, are there any, any uh, questions on that? This has been hanging out there for a long time. <laughs> All of the people affected are aware of the assessment and uh, do want to uh, control the lake level. Are there any questions? Yes, yeah, I, yeah um, that's a big chunk of money, even at the mm -hmm. rate. Uh, does that, is that going to be, are they going to be able to pay, a, you know, over time to reduce the impact on their budget during these difficult times? Uh, it, Matt, Matt could speak, but I believe there was a 20 year uh, option if they wanted to do that. Is that correct, Matt? Yes, that is correct. The Board of Commissioners voted to um, allow them up to 20 years at an interest rate of, I think, 3.1%. Um, we told them a couple of years ago, right before construction started, that we estimated the cost to be at over $8,000. And the final cost came in under $7,000. Okay. Okay. Um, roll call, Kathy, please. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Mr. Lehring. Yes. Mr. Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Nine yes. Okay, that motion that motion uh, passes. The next item is um, old business. Does, does anyone any any commissioners have any old business to bring up at this point? I don't see any um, new business. Yes, thank you. This is this is mine, and I'll tag team with the departments who are needing of capital improvements. In your capital improvement booklet, there's a section on there in capital improvements. Everything that was requested, and it kind of looks like that. And then there's one in there that everything that was approved or moved forward. The items that were moved forward would have been 
enterprise departments such as the uh, water, wastewater. But the things highlighted in yellow is what we want to talk about today and that they were not included in moving forward unless the board agrees to take them out of our unassigned fund balance. Um, again, our general fund reserves that bucket of money that we refer to is that 14 and a half percent to 19 percent that group of dollars so we need to know from you if there's any item highlighted in yellow that where you'd want to include it and therefore it would come out of our reserves um i have matt here uh, the sheriff is here as well to talk about his his items but we can either go through each one by line that's highlighted in yellow only or just let you ask questions on particular ones that are highlighted in yellow. Could you repeat what the highlighted numbers are? Highlighted in yellow are the ones that we do not have general fund dollars to pay for it. And therefore, if we move forward with them, they would have to come out of our general fund reserves known as unassigned fund balance. We don't have a capital of Fund. We, we do have a capital fund, but it doesn't nearly cover the request here of over a couple million dollars. Mr. Administrator, can I ask a question? Yes. Are there any of these that you deem as priority or can all of these wait till next fiscal year? Um, we had that discussion and there are a couple that our public works director pointed out to me. Uh, the roof at the fair at the sheriff's building at the fairgrounds they store equipment in there um that's really it's fifty six thousand not eighty five thousand and it is a match um that's has some value to that one the other one matt pointed out to me was changing the lights out which would save us money over time on south campus and then the register of deeds that one actually is it wasn't spent in 2020, it marks on here as well. Uh, so if it's not spent in 2020, best that you can roll that over. So that one there would become out of the yellow. The other ones, um, Sheriff Poon would be more willing to talk about his needs as the police sheriff for the vehicles and for safety equipment for the jail. Mike, you want to talk about those? Yeah, absolutely. If you'd like me to start. Yes, sir. Um, and I don't know if uh, I guess for Beth, if somebody can check because the six cameras are listed on here twice. I just want to make sure. Um, it's not yeah, we discussed that yesterday that uh, it is listed on there twice. So we would be, we would remove um, the one it shows up under facilities, I believe, as well. All right. Thank you. I just want to make sure it wasn't being duplicated. Um, what I'd like to start with, if I can, are the uh, replacement for our police cruisers. Um, it was sometime after uh, the late 90s when the sheriff's office switched from uh, take-home cars to take-home cars from the uh, just cars running 24 hours a day, just being shared between the sheriff. Um, we've been doing this for a number of years. It's been a very successful program uh, for us. Uh, by going through what our needs are, um, we are at four vehicles a year is uh, what we need to keep our fleet running. Now, these would not be, they don't need to be our mark units that you typically would see. Uh, every once in a while, we could you know, bring in an admin vehicle uh, for our detective bureau or a transport vehicle or something like that. But I believe with uh, us maintaining four vehicles a year, uh, we would be set with that. Uh, for those of you that remember, um, in 2017, when I got elected, the prior administration had removed the vehicles from the budget. Um, I did come to the county board uh, after that, in the end of 17, to try and get some vehicles. They were denied. Um, in November of 2018, uh, we did get new vehicles, six vehicles to catch up uh, with what we had. In those vehicles in 18 that were received, Ford Motor Company had shut down that, that year. We actually received some of those vehicles at the beginning of 20. Um, still trying to maintain that number in March 
of 2020, the board allowed us to get three more vehicles uh, to help maintain our fleet. Um, these are vehicles that our officers, obviously, you guys saw the mileage on those vehicles that are being taken out and for sale. Um, this is a tool that my staff needs to respond to calls. Uh, this is mandated service. And, you know, from time to time, they're, they're running you know, code at excessive speeds. I really don't expect any of them to be driving that fast, running code to a call in a vehicle that has over 120,000 miles. Please keep in mind, uh, a law enforcement vehicle uh, with 120,000 miles is probably comparable to a civilian vehicle with over 200,000 miles. Um, I will just kind of share with you, if we were to stop with uh, the take-home cars and we just went back to rotating cars for the fleet, uh, break down to us needing, I'll run through this for you. We average about 23,000 miles annually per vehicle. All right, so that's about that's just over 601,000 miles per car. Right now, we currently have 26 vehicles, the marked units. If we if we issued those non-assigned to officers, so we had eight vehicles rotating between our four shifts, they would cover 150,000 miles in two years. Obviously, we couldn't switch all eight out every two years because we'd be down a series of vehicles, so we have to all alternate it. That's going to put us at purchasing four vehicles. So whether we have take-home cars or just a fleet of eight vehicles, there's still going to be a need to purchase these vehicles every four years. And the fact of the matter, matter is, if we don't have the take-home cars, the benefit of that, um, we would is that there won't be, a, there's not an increase, I should say, maintenance costs from that, all right? When it's being driven by one officer, uh, if we only had the eight vehicles, there would be an increase in maintenance costs for those vehicles. And then the other benefit uh, is the response time because these officers are calling on from their home. They're immediately at work. Uh, they're able to stay a little later. They don't have to go to the department, drive in, go for a briefing, get their vehicle, and then head out on patrol uh, for their work. And for a department like us here in Muskegon County, um, you know, we're competing with other law enforcement agencies basically all over the world. And we need everything we can through recruitment to bring officers here. And I'll tell you right now, when a young officer is just starting off, he's aware that he's gonna be assigned his own patrol vehicle. Um, you know, that's a big hook for us. And that really helps us out with recruitment. Um, so, you know, really I can only stress the importance of us getting this four vehicle a year rotation and us continuing with it. Um, that the 181,832 is what we call that for four vehicles for this next fiscal year. And uh, I'd like to see that added back on uh, for a capital improvement. Do you have any questions on that before I go? Sure, to the sure if I do have some questions, if I could. Yes, um, right now, I guess I have a little problem with the fact that our sheriff's department is being asked to cover the entire county and a lot of municipalities that don't participate with the sheriff's department in a pens program or anything i mean we have all of our all of the cities and quite a few of the townships have their own police department but we have a lot of them in the rural areas who don't i think that they should help you cover the cost of these cars to protect protect them and we need to set up some kind of something so that the municipalities can help us cover the cost of those cars so that you can continue to provide services out there because those are some of the areas that we do have quite a bit of traffic with our cruisers out there and our officers and they need to help participate with that. So I don't know how we go about that, Sheriff, but I mean, I can see that you need the cars to cover the whole county, but we need to get some participation from those municipalities too. So and, uh, I, I'd be happy to work with you on that if I could. He was, I, I, I do appreciate that. And I, you know, I, I believe you're right. I, I've talked with uh, Mr. Eisenbart before about um, taking time to talk with some of the townships and stuff in those areas that don't have a township. Um, you know, it, there's, there's opportunities out there. Um, I'm all for it. And uh, I'd like to see it happen if we can. I would too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, the next item on here uh, that was requested are a detention stool. Uh, in each one of our pods, uh, the, the housing units inside the jail, uh, there's a video visitation uh, system uh, where an inmate uh, 
uh, stands in front of a, a, vi a video on a phone and talks to their family or whoever, or, you know, could be an attorney or whomever. Um, what the individuals do, because there's not a fixed stool there, uh, they end up grabbing the garbage can that's in the pod. They flip it upside down. The garbage goes on the floor uh, the, and they'll sit on the garbage can as a chair. Uh, ultimately, the garbage can can get cracked, damaged, or they'll use their totes that they're assigned for their own property. They'll bring it out of their cell. It's not supposed to. And they'll sit on it sideways and that'll get cracked too. Um, we're trying to deter this uh, for this damage to this property, uh, getting these uh, detention stools in here um, just so they have a place to sit. Uh, is what that is. So I don't know if there's any questions on that. I, I guess I I guess I have a question and a comment on that. Um, Sheriff, when we're talking a multi-million dollar budget, I, I don't think any of us are too concerned about six thousand dollars worth of stools and seventy one hundred dollars worth of wall mount units. I mean I can understand us being concerned about the cars and the cost of that, but I mean we're also very concerned about public safety, but I mean, I think you know what you need in the jail to make things work for the, so I'm very comfortable with those things. Well, as it goes, the, the last three items are on here, thank you, was, the last three items on here actually are items that, you know, uh, benefit my staff, but also benefit those individuals that we have custody of. Um, the self-contained breathing apparatus and wall mounts, our old jail, uh, this was uh, just another item that was cut uh, from the budget as far as uh, the new jail went. Um, when I came into office, I started looking and I was talking to staff about where the SCBAs were uh, placed and you know, staff was trained on them. They presented to me that they had been issued um, a hood. It's, it's a plastic hood almost with a uh, respirator um, filters on each side of it, but it's an escape hood is what it is. So in the event of a chemical release, a fire or anything like that, um, staff is to put this escape hood on and that's pretty much all that it's made for is to escape. Well, the fact of the matter is, is if there's a fire and we need to relocate inmates, uh, that's gonna take time. Uh, staff is gonna have to go onto floors. Um, and what I'm requesting this $7,000 is for 11 um, basically storage boxes, uh, high quality storage boxes that we can stage throughout the facility, readily available for staff to put on the SCBA so they can uh, assist any movement we have uh, through inmates in an emergency or anything like that. Um, the last is the uh, new cameras. Uh, when the jail was built, a decision was made to not place video cameras in our highest security cells that we have in the facility. Uh, we have them everywhere else in the uh, housing units except for our highest security cells. And I just really didn't understand that. We've asked for this before and it was denied. Um, the six cameras themselves uh, can be invaluable, obviously, because like I said, these are the um, most violent individuals that we have. Typically, most of them are the ones that are going to the Michigan Department of Corrections before we're able to send them there. Um, and uh, it really would be a benefit uh, to my staff and also uh, to the county as a whole if we had a monitoring system inside those cells. So these are the items that we uh, I have requested for capital improvement for this next fiscal year. Um, each one is something that is needed. Um, it's something that'll assist staff, like I said, and uh, you know potentially assist the, the individuals that we're responsible to also. I don't know if anybody has any questions about any of those or if I said something that uh, you may have a comment. Uh, Sheriff, just a question. Those, those new um, vehicles, the SUVs, so yes, that, sir. that request will be in there every year then? Yes. Okay. But uh, well, uh, Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. The what we're looking at, and it's not when I say that though, um, you know, one year it might be we need three um, unmarked vehicles for the DB or something for a transport. So um, we're, when we do our math and we're working through the amount of vehicles that we have and the miles that the officers drive, um, we are at a need for four vehicles a year. Okay, anybody else? Any other? Any other questions on that? On... Yeah, I have a question. Uh, the money that we end up spending out of these highlighted items is coming out of a reserve fund, but I right. don't know how much is in that reserve fund. 
That, that's the one that we keep 14, between 14 and a half, 19 percent. Right now, it's 9.4, 9.5 million. Correct, Beth? 9.66 million as of September 30, 2019. Mr. Chairman? Mm. Yes. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to approve the sheriff's request along with the four or five the administrator stated. I would support that motion. Which are those? Could you review those, please? Mr. Administrator? There's one under the sheriff's budget. Um, 181,000, 6,000, 7,000, 15,000 line items. Just those four? Is that what we're talking about right now? Right now, but I also have Mr. Phillips who wants to talk about his as well. All right. So if you want to make a motion on this one, go ahead. All right. Did somebody just, Gary, did you make a motion on that? I made the motion and Susie supported. All right. We, we have a motion to fund the, the items requested by the uh, sheriff. Is there any discussion on that? If I, I think the motion actually, if I might, can, I, can you repeat the motion? I thought it was for all the highlighted items. Yeah, the motion was for the sheriff's request along with the four the administrator had pointed out to us. The sheriffs are part of those, correct? Right. The, 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 sheriff, only, the only four we're approving right now are the, the uh, SUV interceptor replacements, the detention tools, the um, self contained breathing apparatus, wall mounts, and the cameras. Right. I think so, Mr. Foster's uh, motion was to approve those that the uh, administrator had pointed out, like some roofs and, and such. And I think Correct. Uh, Correct. we need to have, if the administrator would go over those, then we can do it all at once instead of having two or three different motions. Correct. That'd be if fine. Um, let's start with Matt on yours, on the, uh, the fairgrounds roof of 56,000, it says 85, but actually going to be 56. Matt? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, Mark, I'll just go over the, the higher priority ones. The ones that I mentioned earlier, the ones that you want okay. to approve, yeah. which is those two. Okay. Um, the, the fairgrounds, as you recall, uh, last year did approximately half of the roofs at the fairgrounds. It was done on a, uh, the fairgrounds paid 50,000, the county paid 40,000, and then MDARD gave us a grant for 40,000. This year, they would like to finish up all the roofs at the fairgrounds, and they'd like us to pay for half of that. Half of that cost is uh, 26,281. Um, the sheriff has a barn uh, that they store stuff in, and that roof is in desperate need of uh, replacing as well. Uh, the cost to do that is estimated at $30,000. So the total uh, request to complete all roofs at the fairgrounds is uh, 56,000. I lost my spot. Why did you say 85? Uh, because that was the estimate, but I just got a recent update from uh, the fair board on the quotes they received. So it's a little bit less. So it's 56. Yes. At 56, 281 is the final number. Uh, the other things that are at the uh, top of a priority uh, list uh, for um, facilities is if we go down to a little bit further down, right there. Matt, can I ask you a question on that roof? Yes. Is the 30,000 the total amount or is that half? Okay, 26,000 is half of all the fairgrounds facilities that the fair board uses. The 30 grand is 100% county, which is for the barn the sheriff's department uses. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, the next one we have um, is at the Harris building go down to that. And what about the UV lights? Okay, I can get to that in just a second. Okay. Um, I 
while you look at Matt, can you tell us what the Harris Building is? Yeah, yeah. the Harris Building is where uh, <laughs> HR is right now. And, and oh, currently, that's right. okay. um, that has two boilers in it that were built when it was originally built. One has been down for several years. Okay. Um, so if, you know, if that boiler goes, we're going to have to go in and fix it. Right. Um, it's estimated cost about fifty thousand dollars. Probably be cheaper to do on a you know to develop specs, bid it, plan it, rather than wait for uh, Christmas Eve to do it. So that has been high on our, our priority list as well. Okay. Um, going, yeah, that, that's estimated at fifty thousand uh, dollars. Another one is we've been researching for quite some time now, um, putting in ultraviolet um, light inside our air handling units at the Hall of Justice. Um, what this system is, you, you put a set of uh, lights, and I got to get to it real quick, in, into the air handling units, and it, and it, sh it gives off a certain wavelength um, of UV light, which it kills and it deactivates um, certain, you know, it deactivates and inactivates bacteria and viruses. Um, the cost for that, and I don't see it on the page right there. What category is it? It's the bottom of the Hall of Justice on page 25. Page 25. Oh, right. Scroll to the bottom of 25, Kathy. 50,000. Yeah, you installation of UVC units in AHU. Yes, that's fifty thousand, Matt. Okay. You know, I've I've got for every single one in the yellow, I've got you know something to talk about. But if, if we're um, so I apologize, we're jumping all over, so I'm I'm not following as closely. Uh, but on page six of my list, uh, Mark had mentioned outdoor lighting at South Campus Hall of Justice and Health West. Um, Seventy-five thousand dollars to upgrade that exterior lighting. Um, it's a two-year payback. We'll save over thirty-five thousand a year in, um, in in just electricity costs um, by converting to the LEDs. And consumers is willing to pay a part of it now. Uh, we like that project because after two years, we're paid back, and we get to realize that savings in perpetuity. So it's something we uh, like considered as as well. What page is this on? What page? Um, I have page six. Mark, what page do you have? Yeah, man, what title is that? Heritage Snow, what title is it under, man? That's the very last one for facilities right above office services. Because we want to talk about office services as well. Yeah. Outdoor lighting, it's called, on page 28, page 28, Kathy. <laughs> Oh. 75,000. 75,000. 75,000. Um, another priority for facilities is you know, we've lost three of our older trucks due to broken frames, transmissions. We'd like to replace the plow truck. You know, facilities does plowing at the Hall of Justice, South Campus, Oak Street, Peck Street, the Depot, and Health West. Um, you know, and our, our newest truck right now is over 10 years old. And again, we've lost three. That's another priority for us. We estimate that cost to be $38,000 all out. Um, is there any, I mean, I can speak on all these items if you like, but clearly we're not going to be able to afford to do them all, but those are our, our priority at, at this time. The truck, yep. the snow plow included? Yeah, the snow plow. Uh, the lighting project, okay. fairgrounds roof, and the boilers at the HR building. Matt, you will check a, check and see if there are any grants or anything for some of that lighting and stuff, correct? That that includes the grants. We've been working okay, with consumers great. on that. Wonderful, so yes, thank you. That and does include the grants. Great. You know, the other... So, Mark, what is the total that you want to... Well, so, so far, that got us up at 460000 and Ivan wants to speak on his. Should we do but, these ones first? No, that, that's we, the, I thought we were going to do them all at once. We might as well do them all in one motion. 
Yeah, okay. Just let I'm Director Phillips that. talk first, and then we'll do them all together. Mr. Chairman. Phillips. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, Ivan. That's Mark. Yeah. Mark Fairchild. That's Mark Fairchild. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, I got uh, got muted there, and I wasn't sure if the uh, archive writer was addressed. I believe it was page 28. It's uh, ninety-three thousand dollars. That is that is an appropriation out of the automation fund, and it has a fund balance. One of yes, sure that was. Yes, uh, uh, clarified that at the beginning. Uh, Mark uh, Beth is going to. Uh, Make that correction because it was not spent in 2020. We can't show it in 2020 and 2021 at the same time. So right. as long as you didn't spend it in 2020, we'll delete it off of that and add it to 2021. Right. I apologize. That a call that came in and had too many screens going on here. So thank you though for clarifying. Thank you. Thank you very. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for recognizing me. Okay, go ahead. Ivan. Commissioner Skolnick. Uh, yes. Yes, I can. Am I unmuted? You're, you, we can hear you. You're good. Go ahead. First, I'd like to give the sheriff an update. The WatchGuard video storage for the dash cams and the body cams is now completely migrated over to our new UCS drives storage, which was eliminated by the state <laughs> grant. The sheriff would have lost the entire grant unless the county provided the storage. And it's up and running. I hope the sheriff is happy with that. Secondly, uh, office services. Could you please bring up office services? Yes. Uh, the uh, Outbook scanner can be eliminated from the budget completely. But with that caveat, I would like to at least ask, we have needed a new copier down there, which is another $100 a month for 12 months for three years that got eliminated by budget. I need to have that put back, but I'm more than willing to give up the open scanner uh, for office services. You're giving up something that wasn't approved, Ivan. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty good at that, aren't I? <laughs> but well, I really, I really need that. I really need that that, uh, that copier because we're not going to be able to perform our job and without it for another hundred dollars a month. It's it, it needs to get put back in in, in our office services budget, please. So, Mr. Administrator, my motion will include all those we talked about. And will it also include the one for office services? If not, Absolutely. I will include no, it. No, I don't want included. Wonderful. Sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, the total of that is 460000 roughly. That's my rough. Beth has an exact number. But recall, we will spread the sheriff over the next uh, five years for the police cars. So, yes. Uh, I'm ready for that motion then. I thought that was the amount before we added the new ones in. No, the sheriff is roughly 210, roughly. Right, right. But he is going to get the police cars he needs this year, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. So what percentage does that leave for that fund? If you take out 500,000, Beth, roughly. We'll hear the numbers crunch here in a second. About eight million or nine million, it looks like. Well, it all depends on how this year, this fiscal year ends the year. So it's hard to it's hard to really make that determination at this point. Would that drastically drastically reduce that fourteen percent or no? Um again, it all depends on this fiscal year. Uh, we we did receive some update from Mac about grant that we applied for, uh, the $2.1 million grant that we applied for, uh, based on an update last week from MAC, they indicated that the state received um, $350 million of requests estimated for the $200 million pot of money that was available. Uh, if you recall, you approved last week a um, budget amendment for the general fund for this year that's a deficit of just under 1.3 million. Uh, if the, the numbers that Mac is quoting us are accurate, that means of the 2.1 million, we'll get you know about half of that, a little more than half of that, based on the duration that they're planning on giving us. So 
the current fiscal year will still probably look at a, a small deficit, assuming the MAC estimates are correct. Um, so we we hopefully won't have to eat into too much of this year, too much this year of the unassigned fund balance. However, um, you know, next year we're still showing the one point eight million dollar shortfall as of now. So um, Beth, Beth, can I can I just make a comment here? We yeah. we we kicked the furlough question. Uh, we kicked it down the road for two weeks, but that's a big deal. Yes. Yeah, that's coming up next Tuesday, which is roughly going to be between five hundred and a million dollar decision there as well. Whoa. Okay. Um, I forgot one here. I want to ask Patrick to chime in at this time. Finnegan. Thank you, uh, Patrick Finnegan, uh, District Court Administrator, and uh, thank you, uh, Commissioners, for, uh, for your time. There is one item on there that I would uh, just like to draw attention to. Um, uh, we've submitted the courts collectively, um, the District Court, the Circuit Court, and the Probate, probate Court, have um, collectively for the last, I believe this is the third year, submitted a, a capital improvement request for um, uh, court recording equipment. Um, it, 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 it often goes unnoticed, but it really is foundational to, to what a court proceeding entails. Um, uh, a court of record, which the district, the circuit, the probate court all are, um, every hearing that takes place, a verbatim record of everything that happened has to be maintained and preserved. Um, it's, it's fundamentally crucial to what the court does that we have a record of, the, of what takes place so that we can ensure that the court's orders are adhered to and enforced. Um, each of um, uh, our courtrooms um, uh, currently utilize um, uh, justice audiovisual solutions systems. Um, they are of varying degrees of age. Um, the oldest, I, I believe, are here in the district court, which were installed when uh, the remodel and renovation took place in 2011. Um, technology has come an awful long way uh, since that time, uh, and um, uh, over the last uh, three years now, um, our current provider, uh, current vendor has, has come to us and said, you really need some significant uh, uh, upgrades. Um, we've explored avenues for um, um, what those upgrades would entail. Um, we've explored um, different vendors uh, and gotten quotes uh, from them, and we've submitted uh, capital improvement requests um, for uh, for those equipment uh, for that equipment uh, for all um, uh, of our courtrooms in the Hall of Justice uh, for the last uh, several years now, um, wanting to avoid the situation in which there's some type of um, uh, failure of, of one of these systems and we're not able to proceed with, uh, with court because we're not able to adequately uh, record and preserve the, the record. Um, it's been um, uh, our uh, sentiment that we can move to a uh, uh, system that is more software based as opposed to hardware intensive. Uh, and we've tried to um, um, explore options uh, for that and to spread the, uh, the financing of, uh, of this over, uh, over several years. Um, so that's what we've included in our um, uh, request um, the, last, uh, the last two years and we've included in, uh, in this year as well. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, any of the commissioners might have about it. Commissioner Skolnick, I do have a question for Patrick, if I could. Yes, Susie, go ahead. Patrick, will that uh, eliminate your court reporters? Uh, not necessarily. Um, so th there's two different systems that are kind of in place. Actually, I take that back. There are really three different systems that are kind of in place. The court reporter uh, or, or stenographer that, that, that we're often, you know, we think of in our mind when we think of who's, who's in a courtroom, um, that is still in place in one uh, of the circuit courtrooms uh, uh, on the sixth floor. Um, most of the other circuit and probate courtrooms are, are conducted through video and uh, audio recording. So there isn't actually a stenographer that's taking down what, what's taking place. Uh, the court recording equipment systems are, are handling that. In the district court, the oldest um, systems that are taking place, those are just audio only. And uh, what we're proposing uh, in terms of our upgrades would include audio and video. And it wouldn't necessarily eliminate what the recorder does in an audio um, uh, environment, but it would allow 
um, us to move away from having that recorder physically present in the courtroom if we're able to capture both audio and video at the same time. So we would be less dependent upon having that court recorder um, uh, in the courtroom every time that the judge is on the record. Will that, will that save you any money by not having them there? It certainly would. Well, it would, those court recorders are cross-designated as judicial secretaries. So they're judicial secretaries slash recorders. Now, I those see. are positions that are, that are provided by, by statute um, that, that a judge is entitled to have as part of their judicial staff. So we wouldn't be eliminating that position, but it would certainly allow us to redistribute, you know, job duties and functions potentially that would allow for other savings elsewhere. The position itself wouldn't be going away. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Certainly. Okay. Mark. Oh, I have a number in for you. So the unassigned fund balance is currently at 9,668,000. Um, our goal, 19% is at 9.5. So roughly we're over that 9.5 by 168,000, which helps us out with some of these projects. But including Patrick's, we're at 547, which roughly brings us down to roughly 9 million. And then whatever else happens between now and then with furloughs and uh, best mention of the short fall of 2020. Bob, if I could, I would like to amend the motion to include the family court, uh, whatever they call that, court recording equipment. <laughs> yes. So and I will. Gary, did you second that? Yes, sir. Okay, and you're you're okay with the? Uh, I'm absolutely case? perfect with it. We got to add Patrick in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bob, I have a question. Does this total remove the item that item said or that Ivan said he didn't need this year? Correct. And it replaces it with a printer, a copier, I think it was. All right. So Mark, how much how much are we taking out of the reserve for this then? I only use a rough number of 547 plus or minus my rounding. Okay. So let's not use a number, but just say a so what I'll do is bring this back to full board as well when Beth includes the final minutes of the budgets. But as long as you approve those projects um, and not worry about the exact number, then we'll have that for you later. Okay, so we're, we're not, you, are you looking for, a, um, we've got a motion that's been supported. Should yes, go ahead and vote on that. And then we can we can tally the numbers, but I'm just giving you a ballpark for the clear. All right, is there any other, any other comments or discussion on this? If I would just uh, uh, Yes, I mentioned that there is some funding, as was asked earlier by I don't remember which commissioner. Um, there is about one hundred sixty thousand available in what's called the public improvement fund that could also be used to um, pay for some of these uh, projects that would not affect the general fund. Oh, perfect! All right, so we'll vote on this. We're going to vote on the expenditure, and then. When it's finalized, we'll, we'll decide where the money comes from. But the money is available. So, um, Kathy, have you gone to sleep yet, or are you still there? <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Could we have a roll call on this final motion, please? Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Harvey Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Lehring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Nine yes. Okay. All right, I have one more for you. Those are all tough decisions. I mean, these are all tough decisions to figure out what we do, don't include, do include and don't include. But this next one is with our HR director. It's something that the state has offered and we want your opinion on whether or not we should continue, well, not to continue, but start offering for our employees. Kristen? Thank you, Kristen Wade, Human Resources Director. So you may have heard that currently employers uh, starting today, September 1st, have the ability to offer the option to employees to defer their payroll taxes um, so they have the option to defer these taxes over the next four months, so effective September, October, November, and December, 
And again, this is just a deferral. So then they would need to repay those. And the county as the employer would have the responsibility to collect those payroll taxes over then the next four months. So January, February, March, and April of 2021. And these payroll taxes are just the social security portion of the FICA tax which is approximately 6.2%. Um, it does not include the Medicare portion of that FICA, which is an additional 1.45%. But so we're just talking about 6.2%. And there is a limitation on that that excludes any employees that have a pre-tax income of over 4,000 biweekly. Um, so any employee that's over that amount uh, would be excluded and not have the option. But I guess the question that we have is, does the county want to participate in this and offer the option to the employees uh, to defer their payroll taxes? And again, it would just be an option to the employees. So, you know, they can voluntarily choose to do it or not do it. Um, but we'd like to know from the commissioners whether you would like us to give the employees the ability to do this. Um, Kristen, this, this, is a, this is a benefit that was, um, it's a federal benefit. It was passed by Congress, is that correct? Correct. Okay, I mean, I, just from a personal standpoint, it, it, you got to pay it back, so you'll be paying it back January, February, March, and April. Um, right. But uh, it's it's available. I don't know what is it. What do other people think? I got yeah. a question. What if, what, I have a what, question what, too. Oh, go ahead. Who is first? I don't know. I can't tell. Mr. Chair. Yes, Marcia. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it would help those families where somebody is unemployed. Uh, during co this COVID, you know, high point and, and maybe reemployed in January. And, you know, so they, those families could benefit from this. Uh, I, I'm not sure outside of that, I'm not sure what the advantage would be. You still have to pay them. And I don't think it matters to the county. To, is there any, it doesn't help our finances any, does it? Uh, only, I, I, only one suggest, thought pattern is when they, if they were to resign between now and Christmas, we'd have to make sure we take it out of their paycheck. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and so I, I have a comment too, Bob, if I could. Okay, Susie, go ahead. You know, I, I, I certainly do understand Marcia's, you know, point there, but my concern is that if you take it, if you don't take it out for four months, I think it's going to be extremely hard to put it back right after Christmas and everything and people to have to double up what they're paying on that. And I also have some concern that it looks like today I noticed in the news that the $600 they got every month on unemployment is going to be taxable. So that's going to throw another, you know, big cost to the employees in there too, that were off. So I would, I would rather not offer this and just keep it the way it is right now. That's just my personal opinion. All right, wait, before everybody will have a chance. My, the reason I asked if this was a federal, you know, it's a federal law, it's been passed or it's just a, uh, an executive order. It's an executive order. Oh, then we shouldn't do it. <laughs> okay. Any other? Any that other? Could... No, I mean because it makes a difference to me. It does. It does. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment on this because okay, go ahead, Charles. I think that you know this this was a federal order, um, but I'm also concerned about two things. Uh, one is what Commissioner Hughes shared is that we may be setting people up for something that they're not ready for. Um, yeah, it's great to defer your taxes so you can take home some more, but nobody really makes the preparation to pay this debt back, even though they know they have it. Like you say, with the holidays going through and everything else, people will end up having to do that. I think it also turns into a nightmare for our accounting mm -hmm. or payroll to have to get it to collect all this different monies from different folks. Um, and, and some people may be hurt more by having to pay it back later on. Um, and then also, 
you know, the proper funding is not going into our social security, which I think is another political game that's being played. And I just think it's best that we stay out of this. Anybody else? Mr. Chair, may I? Yes, you may. Kristen, what is your input on this? My input is um, like some of the other commissioners, I, you know, I fear for some decisions that employees make. Um, and I guess I, my personal opinion is that we maybe need to protect them from themselves. <laughs> Enough said, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we hear you. Yeah. I, I'm uh, getting swayed by that opinion. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a question, if I may. Yes, sir. So Mark said that we would have to know by December 31st that if we're people were to leave, we'd have to take it out of their paycheck. There may not be enough in their paycheck. And also, what if they quit January 12th? Um, then who's responsible to make that money up? Does the county have to make that money up? Or does the state or the federal government? My understanding is the county at this point. If we, didn't, we can't get it from the employee, we have to make it up. Exactly. We the and county. Well, I said, would that be a debt of the employee or why would we owe it? Kristen? Yeah, I don't have that answer. I know I got the opinion from corporate counsel that we have the option of whether to offer this to our employees or not. And if we do offer it, then we have also have the responsibility to get the money back from the employees. Uh -huh. So if we can't, um, that's a good question. How, you know, is that our debt or can we somehow tell the government that you know, these employees owe these debts. I don't know. Mr. Chairman? Yes. yes. I, I say we take our director's advice and don't open this can of worms. Yeah, I well, can I tell you. Most, you. I, would not offer them to I, would, I would say that I've, I've seen some agencies get in trouble with withholding these taxes and we would be obligated to pay that because we were obligated to collect it. So I don't, I don't think we really want to go down this road. I agree. Uh, Mark, yeah. uh, do we need a motion? Do we need a motion to do anything with this? It would probably be nice yeah. to not participate, a motion not to participate. I I'll tried to make that motion, or I'll support Marsha's motion to not participate. Okay. Um, all right, we have a motion to not participate. So yes means no. <laughs> is there any uh any any more discussion on this i i this this is really in my opinion this is really it's a foolish thing to do to people they're going to get a little bit of money and then they're going to get after christmas they're going to double up their withholding taxes right all right uh, Chris, uh kathy uh roll call please mr snyder yes Mr. Wilkins. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes means no. <laughs> Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. And yes. Okay, Mark, are you done finally? <laughs> well, I, keep, I keep getting these notifications that Beth now wants to speak on a topic that she brought up earlier. What? I, so sorry. So the earlier motion at Courts and Public Safety uh, with the sheriff regarding leasing um, the vehicle through Ford Motor Credit, I did do some research while the other meetings were going on. And um, it, it referred to my deal pricing. My deal does not offer a leasing option directly. Uh, but we can do uh, get several get free quotes uh, for financing to see what we can achieve through um, a, the best interest rate. So I would suggest um, making that change when it comes back to full board to approve um, getting free quotes for uh, financing options for that vehicle. That would be great. And then we can we can maybe it's maybe it's worth doing maybe it isn't we'll find out thank you beth for 
for doing that sure. right away. That's okay. that's my last comment. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I mine too. Thank I'm you. afraid you're gonna bring up the flood. <laughs> All right. Public public comment. If there's anybody still uh with 27 <laughs> people still on the call. Um, if anybody has uh, a comment, now's your now's your chance. Go ahead and speak up. Bob, I do not see any hands. Okay. Uh, Patrick Finnegan from, from the district court. Yes, go ahead, Patrick. Thank you. I was just going to add my, my thanks and appreciation to all the commissioners for uh, for their consideration. Um, uh, this really, um, in, in many ways, will allow me to sleep better every night, um, knowing that um, we will have a plan in place to uh, uh, make sure that our, our court recording equipment is working and that any morning uh, uh, we'll have up-to-date technology that's going to, to work and I, I don't have to have a, a panic when, when I hear the words uh, come from a courtroom that, that they're not able to record and they don't know how they're going to proceed. So uh, thank you all for uh, your consideration. These are all very difficult uh, decisions to make and I really appreciate your, uh, your deliberation and consideration on this matter. Thank you. Patrick, you're, Patrick, you're getting six cassette recorders. <laughs> From Radio Shack. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, final, final board comments at uh, 601. Has anybody got any? Commissioner Skolnick, Sheriff Poulin, if I may. Yes, yeah, yeah, Sheriff. Go ahead. Just real quick, um, I did have to leave my office to get over. I had a 5.30 dinner appointment with my wife, so I'm sitting in my car now in the parking lot of the restaurant, but I wanted to take the time to personally thank everybody for your support for public safety here in Muskegon County. Thank you again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you meeting? <laughs> I, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned. Thank you all. I'm out of here. Hey, Mark. Thank you.